Welcome back to part two of our access method training series. Today, we're deep diving into setting up the structure that Nick Milo designed to enhance your knowledge management game. This is part two of our series. I recommend going back and checking that out if you haven't seen it yet. Otherwise, uh, we started or finished off with the encounters folder last time. If you're starting with a clean slate, no worries. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a systematic framework set up in Obsidian. So recapping from last session, at the heart of the access method are seven core folders. Each of these folders serves a unique purpose, creating fluid workflow from encounter to expression. Those seven folders are encounters, atlas, calendar, cards, extras, sources, and spaces, spelling out access as an acronym. Now to the essential home note. This note will be your compass guiding you through your knowledge forest. Remember this note sits alongside the seven folders we created in the root directory. Next, we move on to our spaces folder. Within the spaces folder, we have the optional maps template. I do recommend creating a folder structure in here called template so that you can copy and create your new spaces at ease. For those that are really keen on implementing access, creating this template subfolder will enhance your experience and make it much easier to, to develop them. Now the subfolders are MOCs, maps of content that is, areas, projects, and support notes, spelling out maps with their, uh, with their headings. Once you've set up, your folder should resemble something like this. Now heading back up to our encounters folder. Again, this is where all of your fleeting notes reside. Think of this as a temporary holding space. Your thoughts first time. The idea is to process these notes regularly. Next, we move on to the atlas folder. As the name suggests, this is your maps of content or a map of maps of an atlas, a bird's eye view, if you will. For a more automated experience, you can get familiar with the data view plugin. The data view plugin lets you create some quick tags to enable your MOCs to automatically update for you, which makes it much, much easier. You can do that just like this with this code here. Your calendar is your timeline of your notes from daily musings to specific events. What I like to use this for is sort of a journal entry, a bit of a sleep calendar for my daily reviews and that kind of thing. I also use this for my meeting notes if, uh, if they're not space specific. So a lot of my work does actually happen inside the spaces folder. This is another spot where you'll capture great ideas and, and notes from meetings and so forth that need to get processed and moved into your cards or spaces folders. Speaking of the cards folder, the cards section is your treasure chest of your evergreen notes, refined ideas, and processed insights. Thinking from a Zettelkasten type perspective, this is where your main Zettels live, your evergreen notes. Next, we have our extras folder. Extras is your versatile storage space. This is where you would keep your templates and attachments. Uh, I keep my Excalibur stuff here and have it as my default attachment template folder, as, as well as when I paste an image, it automatically sends all of my images over here. You can do that by right clicking a folder and saying set as default attachment folder. Finally, you have your sources folder. This is where I like to keep my archive, but also where I keep my literature notes. These are where I read from a book and take my highlights and the highlights automatically sync into my sources folder for me to pull and, uh, and create extra cards and so forth from there. This is another location where you would, uh, you would typically move into to process and turn them into cards and that, but they're also sort of semi unprocessed in that they're, uh, someone else's work. So you, you put your, your sources or your your other people's work in here. You also put your archive stuff, stuff that you can easily find if you need it, but uh, but want to pull it back at a moment's notice. Now with this structure in place, you're ready to fill it in with your thoughts, ideas, and knowledge. Remember that the framework is flexible and adapt it as you grow. Stay tuned for part three, where we dive into using and optimizing each folder effectively. Until then, happy linking your thinking.